back, everybody. We're back with Donald Rumsfeld. Uh, okay, Secretary Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld, are you ever upset that now there is another Donald out there who <laughs> is even more famous than you about not apologizing for anything? <laughs> because he will not back down from anything he's ever said. Do, do you, does he strike you as a commander in chief? I don't know him. I've never met him. Really? Um, it, what, what strikes me about him is that he's, I can't imagine how Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump can pull crowds of 20,000 people to an event to hear them speak. It's fa that presidents don't do that. I, Vice think, I, think, there are, don't I do think they're appealing on an emotional level. The people are very frustrated with what's going on in Washington. And whether or not you agree with what either man is saying, they're saying, I agree with you, we have to change the status quo in some way. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. They're touching a nerve somewhere. Does a Secretary of Defense um, affect policy or implement policy? The President is the policymaker. Mm -hmm. and, and he takes recommendations from his cabinet and from senior officials in the White House. And then he makes a judgment. He mm -hmm. decides what ought to be done. And the American people basically decide because they decide who's going to be President. And, and uh, that's the way the system works. When the decision was made to go into Iraq in 2003, um, the situation that we have now, which is a chaotic uh, uh, Iraq and Syria with the control of ISIS and, mm -hmm. well, the chaos following the Arab Spring in the area as well, is the situation we have now, was it ever in, considered to be an outcome? Was this a worst case scenario or a beyond worst case scenario? I think the, the disorder in the entire region and the, the con conflict between the Sunnis and the Shia uh, is, is something that uh, generally people had not anticipated. On the other hand, if you think what Eisenhower said, he said, uh, the plan is nothing, planning is everything. The point being that anything changes with first contact with a problem. Uh, the, the enemy has a brain, they make mm -hmm. decisions. People ask me, well, uh, why are they doing what they're doing? And, and the answer is they're doing what they're doing because they can do it, because they don't have big armies, big navies, big air forces, which they can't compete with us. So they are attacking from an asymmetrical standpoint, and they're trying to destroy the nation-state concept in the world. The first thing they do is to uh, eliminate a border, for example, between Iraq and Syria. The top two Republicans and uh, the top two Democrats None of them think that going into Iraq was the right choice to make. Do you have any reflection on the decision to go into Iraq? Do you still think it was the right thing to do 12 years later? I think when the president made the decision, there were the, the Iraqi government had opposed something like 15 or 16 UN resolutions. Mm -hmm. They were repressive. They had used chemical weapons on their neighbors, the Iranians. They had used chemical weapons on their own population, the Kurds. Mm -hmm. And and there was a lot of evidence that they they had already used chemical weapons. Uh, and it seems to me the president, given the facts he had from the intelligence community, made the right decision. In retrospect, they, they didn't find large caches of chemical or biological weapons, although the UN inspector, Charles Delfler, did say they had the facilities still were there, the people were still there who had the capability, and the precursors to these weapons were still there, and they could have reconstituted them in a matter of weeks. There's one question that gets asked of you and other people who were in favor of the invasion of 2003 in Iraq that I, this question I don't think is fair, which is, well, then if why, you ask, now, why ask an unfair question? No, no, no. I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's unfair. I'm going to ask you a different question. Oh, I see. Let's tell you why. I think this question is unfair, which is if you knew now what you... Oh, I see. If you knew then what you knew now, mm -hmm. uh, would you make the same decision? You only know then what you know then. That's you right. You only know now what you know now. And our now is tomorrow's then. They'll be saying the same thing to the decisions that get made today, you know, 15 years from now. That's true. But that leads me to your most famous saying, which is talking about uncertainty in the world, that there are known knowns, things we know we know, and tell me if I get this wrong, because I know this is your baby. There are known unknowns, things we know that we don't know. And there are also unknown unknowns. They're the that ones don't that get know. you. Exactly. Yeah. But in this case, isn't the one that got us 
something that is a, there's a fourth option that no one ever talks about, which is the unknown knowns, which is the things that we know, and then we choose not to know them or not let other people know we know. <laughs> that there are some things... Uh, recently, a declassified I, I 2002 memo from the Joint Chiefs of Staff says that 90% of the... Um, uh, I'm going to save you embarrassment. You don't have to... You never... I can't be embarrassed. I'm a comedian. <laughs> that th this, this thing came out. It says, Our knowledge of the Iraqi nuclear weapons program is based largely, perhaps 90%, on analysis of imprecise intelligence. So there is analysis of intelligence that you believe that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And I believe that sincerely. I don't think anybody made up the belief no, no. that there were weapons of mass destruction. I don't, that is, that is cynicism beyond I would ever want to think of my government. Mm -hmm. I believe that everybody believed that they were there. Mm -hmm. But there was no hard proof that they were there. Mm -hmm. And yet it was presented to the American people as if there was. So there was an unknown known for the American people. It was known that there was not hard evidence, but we were presented a partial picture. And that's the unknown known that we were denied. Do you think that was the right thing to do? Well, first of all, that memo was sent by the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yes. And we put it on my website mm -hmm. and made it public years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's not... No, I know it's declassified, yeah. Well, yeah, but... Uh, I don't put classified things on my website. <laughs> I, want, I want you to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, get in trouble for that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I guess, and, uh, saying I'm not trying to ask you an unfair question. I'm trying to ask you what I think is a yeah. fair question. Yeah. Uh, were there things that the administration or you knew that we didn't learn about out of the best possible intentions, which is there were things that would undermine the case for a war you thought was necessary to save the United States? The president had available to him intelligence from all elements of the government. Mm -hmm. And the National Security Council members had that information. It was all shared, it was all supplied, and it's never certain. If, if, it, were if it were a fact, it wouldn't be called intelligence. Wow. <laughs> I think you answered my question. Yeah. I mean, I mean... The, the intelligence is tough to do. And what you do is you look at all of that and, and you've got a certain set of facts that you can ve verify 100%. Mm -hmm. And then there's information that is not capable of being verified 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's out of that aggregation of information mm -hmm. that presidents make decisions all the time. I guess the ultimate question is, is that because there turned out to be no weapons of mass destruction and because the American people now feel in majority that it was the wrong war, do you think it undermines our trust of the government that is necessary for your intelligence apparatus that you're describing to do their job? Because if you say, trust us, we, we, we've got this, and you get it so wrong, isn't another level of damage that we won't trust them next time? I think there's always a risk that people looking at government will come to conclusions that, that they may not be right. We, we, that's why we have a democracy. I mean, that's why people vote and they, and they make judgments. Yeah, and sure. and uh, we, no, I think most people in the United States understand that government's not perfect. I mean, look how long it takes to get snow removed. Um, uh, but, but uh, on the other hand, I think what's really important are the intentions and, and the capabilities of the people. And, and for the most part, I think it was Churchill who said that uh, democracy is the worst form of government except for any other that's ever been tried. And, and you know what else he said? Try my solitaire game. <laughs> Churchill solitaire. Donald Rumsfeld, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a real honor to talk about with you. Thank you.